We have such a delicious recipe for pan de campo, aka cowboy camp bread, and we wanted to share it with you. This bread was made famous by the vaqueros and the cowboys back in the day as they drove the cattle north. It was simple and easy to make and could last a long time without spoiling. It's a lot of fun to cook in the Dutch oven like the cowboys used to do it, but you can also make these in the comfort of your own kitchen. In this video, we're going to show you how to do both. It's great to eat by itself, dip it in stews, or to sop up gravy. The favorite way in our house is with butter and honey. In the old days, the cowboys used to spend all day and burn wood down into coals. That's fun if you got all day and a case of cold beer in the fridge, but you can also use briquettes or lump charcoal for heat for an easier cooking method like I'm doing today. Let's get fired up, put some heat on the Dutch oven, and make some pan de campo. Vamonos! We're gonna take two cups of gold metal flour. My wife is telling me, don't get dirty. <laughs> make sure that it's exactly one cup. Now we're gonna get another one. When it comes to baking, friends, your measurements pretty much do need to be very, very precise. Next up, we're going up with one teaspoon of salt. Next up, two teaspoons of baking powder. Next, and this is not a real common thing in pan de campo, but we've always used one teaspoon of sugar. Now this is pretty much for one large bread or two smaller breads. You don't want to touch the flour too much with your hands. You don't want it to warm up. You want to keep it as cool as you possibly can. We want to make sure that that salt and the baking powder mixes in really, really good. All right, next up is our half a cup of Crisco butter flavored shortening. I really like this because it has the measurements here. And right down the middle is half a cup, half a cup. So you want to incorporate this um, butter flavored Crisco into the flour with this pastry cutter till you have about pea-sized pieces, more or less. Kind of stir it around a little bit and make sure I don't have any really big pieces laying around. I would say we're there. All right, next up we have three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Now we're gonna take just a little bit of this milk at a time and I'm gonna start stirring it in. You can use the whisk at first and then we're gonna use our hands afterwards. You wanna try and get it all incorporated in there before you start to knead the bread a little bit. And Terry likes to mix it here inside the bowl. Me, I'd rather do it outside of the bowl. I just feel like I can work a little bit better with my hands. All right, now all you want to do is just fold it over a few times and make sure that all the ingredients get incorporated really well. I like to press it down and get whatever's underneath as well. As I was saying, you don't want to knead too much. All we want to do is we want to put it all together like that. This bread needs to rest for at least an hour. We like to give it two hours at least at our house, but if you're short on time, an hour will probably be okay. So I'm going to take this food service plastic and just cover it. I'm gonna wrap it one way and then the other. We're gonna cover it nice and tight. Cover it with a towel, set it aside. We'll be back in an hour and a half or two to make some pan de campo. There's a couple of ways you can make your bread. You can either roll it out by hand or use a rolling pin. The first one I'm gonna do by hand because honestly, if you're not real experienced with the uh, rolling pin, it's a little hard to get that thing looking really nice and round. So to do the bread, I'll usually take the palm of my hand right here and start pressing it out. So I'm gonna make me a nice big bread here and it's almost perfectly round. So you push it out, push it out, push it out, push it out. And if you notice, I didn't put any flour underneath. We don't use flour underneath. That does help it not stick a little bit better, but we've never really had an issue with that anyway. And we're looking for about a half an inch thickness, more or less, which is about where we're at right now. We're gonna poke a few holes through here. It's not a certain number of holes. It depends on your bread size, but this helps it cook all the way through and it cooks even from top to bottom. And then you gotta be quick, otherwise it'll wanna fall apart on you. And I didn't get it right in the center of the parchment paper. It's okay. All right, now Terry uses this pizza pan and parchment paper to cook it in the oven. We're gonna cook one of those for you as well, but this one's going outside. I'm gonna try to roll this one out with a rolling pin. You may discover why I prefer to use my hands. <laughs> What the rolling pin does do is make it real nice and flat on top. Vamonos. All right, friends, we're out here. Got my Dutch oven inside my uh, RPG uh, grill here. So I have a little bit of charcoal down there. I'm gonna add a little bit more, not a lot. I don't like to cook with too much heat on the bottom because then it's gonna burn. Gonna put our Dutch oven back in here. And we're gonna put some heat up over here on top to start warming up and heating up that Dutch oven nice and hot. I added some 
unlit charcoal to the charcoal that's lit here. That allows the heat to continue to come up a little bit slower. It is time to put a bun inside the Dutch oven. All right, I'm gonna take about a tablespoon. Spread that around a little bit. And I can tell just because there's no sizzle there that I need a little bit more heat down there. We're gonna give that about a minute and then we're gonna go ahead and lay our bread in there. We need that heat to cook the bread from the bottom and a lot more heat on top to cook it from the top. While we have this little bit of downtime, waiting for the Dutch oven to get hotter, I'm gonna put some more charcoal in my chimney over here and have another batch ready to go in a little while. All right, I moved my Dutch oven around a little bit to get some nice, even oil on the bottom. Let's lay, let's lay that bread in there. And it's usually one quick little drop, sizzling underneath it a little bit. You wanna spin it around, that helps keep it from sticking. All right, Fred, we have our first pan de campo in there. I wanna take a minute to give a big shout out to our sponsor for this video, Texas Standard out of Austin, Texas. They're the ones that got me these nice clothes and cooking in style. Texas Standard is a premium men's clothing company that makes Western clothing with a modern style. They're based in Texas and I'm from Texas, so you can see how I would easily jump at the opportunity to collaborate with them. Guys, these clothes are cool. Great for work at the office, hanging out at home, a day out at the ranch, on the boat, or behind the grill, or like today, cooking pan de campo in a Dutch oven. They have something for everyone, so y'all check it out at www.texas-standard.com. And use the discount code ARNITEX, all in caps, all together, for 10% off site-wide. All right, let's check this bread. It's not stuck, it's cooking. It's cooking really good now. Let's put the lid back on and let it bake from top. Okay, another part of the fun of cooking outdoors is just getting to play with fire. I love to play with fire, man. Uh, so when you're doing open fire Dutch oven cooking like this, you gotta really read your fire, you gotta monitor it, and you gotta keep adding. Especially if it's a windy day, you're gonna have an even bigger challenge because that fire's gonna burn out really quick. There's two ways you can do pan de campo in the Dutch oven. A lot of cooks that cook pan de campo will like to flip their bread a couple of times, flippity flip, hey, flippity flip. But what we've learned is if you put a lot of heat on top, if you have the right heat on the bottom, you get that real pretty golden color and you don't have to flip the bread at all. That's what we're trying to do today. It's been a couple of years since I've done it in the Dutch oven, so let's see if I still remember how to do it. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can get this bread picked up a little bit, just enough to look at it. Oh, it's looking beautiful really crank the heat up here on top. It looks to me like I have more heat on this side than on the other. So in order to get nice even cooking, I like to rotate my lid a little bit. Can we call that the flippity flip? <laughs> it's been 10 minutes right now. Normally the bread's done in 10 to 12 minutes, maybe a little bit, give or take a little. It's gonna take a little bit longer today because we started with less heat on the bottom and less heat on top. All right, it's been another five minutes and just because it's our first bread, I just want to double, triple, quadruple check, make sure that bread's coming along really nice. Ooh, it's starting to get that pretty color, honey. I think it's almost done. It looks like I have more heat on one side of the oven than the other. So one of the things you gotta do is sometimes rotate the whole Dutch oven, or in this case, since I have the lid off, just put your hand in there and give it a nice little twisty. Put the lid back on. That bread's ready in about three minutes, honey. All right, we did that check a little while ago and I'm very sure this bread is done. Look how pretty that looks. Beautiful color, perfectly cooked. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Some more shortening in here. Butter flavor, baby. We're not gonna add any more heat on the bottom this time. We're just gonna lay this bread in here and let it go to town. And uh, spread the coals around nice and even and add a little bit more. We do want some heat on top. Okay, we're all set, but this is bread number three. Been on there for about six or seven minutes. Because of the uneven, a, a while ago on the other one, I'm gonna give this a little 180 rotate, just to make sure. Put the lid back on, we're looking gorgeous on top. I know the bottom's perfect, so we're just gonna put that back on. Trying to achieve that beautiful golden color. Oh yeah, we're almost there, honey. Look at that, that's looking really good. I'm gonna give it another rotate, 180, just in case the heat's uneven on the bottom. We're gonna put it right there. Spread our fire out right here, nice and even. All right, guys, this bread is pretty close to done, if not totally done. Let's take one more look at it. Beautiful. 
we take some melted butter, spread it out on the top. While it's still in the Dutch oven in the last few minutes, I'm gonna put that lid on for just a couple more minutes after one more spin. And let that butter bake on really nice. Now I hadn't done that on the previous breads because that's not a traditional thing when you're making bread out in the trail. That's not what the vaqueros used. That's just a little trick we learned in competition. It's to add color as well as really delicious flavor. We're gonna pull that out in about two more minutes and we'll see you guys inside. Last bread of the day, or the night I should say. And I'm gonna put it in the middle rack right here and just slide it right down there in the middle. We're running at 425, we'll be right back. Starting to look pretty. We're gonna spread a little butter up here on top just cause we like that extra flavor the butter gives it. All the way around, getting some nice color. We're gonna push it back in the oven and uh, we'll be back in about five minutes. It's been right at 20 minutes this time. Let's check this bread out. I do believe it's ready. So there you have it friends. Look at that bread, that's so pretty. That's beautiful. Let's take it over there and Take a big old bite. <laughs> All right, so here it is, friends. This is our last bread of the night. You know, one of the things is what we've always noticed as we make these breads, the more you make, the prettier they get as you go <laughs> during that little cycle. I would encourage you to do it more than once, particularly if your first one didn't turn out beautiful and perfect. Don't get discouraged. You have to practice. You have to do it just like barbecue, just like anything else. In order to get really good, you have to do it over and over and over again. This last couple of breads turned out really pretty. Uh, this was from the Dutch oven outside. This one's from the oven on the inside. So you see, you can make a beautiful bread out in the Dutch oven if you like playing with fire the way I do. You can make a beautiful bread in the oven also, and it's super easy to do. We like to cut them in squares here at my house, so we'll just kind of cut them in long pieces like this, and then we'll cut it across the other way in thirds. Looks nice and moist on the inside. Soft, nice and flaky on the outside. But our favorite way to eat this bread is to take a little bit of butter, put it right here on top. If you have a little extra or too much butter, just put it on the sides. A little bit of honey. Ooh -wee. Cheers, my friends. Mmm. 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 -hmm. We have a winner, honey. All right, my friends, <laughs> that bread turned out amazing. It's been a couple of years when I haven't done it in a while. The first and the second one are kind of like setting my temperature and my fire and getting a feel for it. This is Terry's from In The Oven. I want to show you guys all the breads we made right now. This is the other one from the Dutch oven outside. This is the other one that Terry made inside in the oven. This is the second one I made in the Dutch oven. It got a little toasty. <laughs> Flipped it and I said, I'm going to Flip it right back in a couple minutes. Well, those couple of minutes was more like five or eight minutes. The first one that we made in the Dutch oven was a little, not as smooth and pretty as these, but it was still good. We ate half of it already before. <laughs> That's why it's not in the mix here. Terry and I love to make pan de capo here at home. These are the breads we make. This is the way we like to enjoy them. This is a good old school recipe. I promise if you make it at home, you're gonna love it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. We had a blast doing it, a lot of fun. I always like to play with fire outside and I always love to get my Dutch ovens out for one thing or another. All right, so I wanted to say thank you one more time to our sponsor of this video, Texas Standard. Y'all check them out at www.texas-standard.com. And don't forget, you get a 10% discount with Arnie Tex, all in caps, all together for 10% off on everything on the website. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to get some of our wow rub and our OG rub, go to pitmaster.us. If you want to up your barbecue game, go to pitmasterclass.us. Remember to like, comment, and share. Tell your friends about our channels. Thank you, guys. Y'all keep the smoke light. Make it work. Boom! And make it a wow kind of day. Boom! She's whispering and pointing over there. Don't get dirty. I'm getting a blood test in the morning. I shouldn't be doing this, but I am. <laughs> Not too bad. Tired. When are you going to do tortillas? <laughs> no tortillas for me. Not yet. It got a little toasty on the outside, but look, the inside's perfect. Beautiful. That's the part that's good. Mmm. Bold. Flour. Sugar. Salt. Baking powder. Mix. Add your shortening. Cut it in. Put your buttermilk. Roll it around. Knead it. Roll it out. Prick it. Bake it. Thank and me later. Cook it and enjoy.